Hi, this is Randy Randall of No Age and host of the podcast Hyphen It with Randy Randall. I want to welcome our newest sponsor of the show, DistroKid. DistroKid helps musicians get their music on all the major streaming platforms and artists keep 100% of their royalties. Hyphenate listeners get 30% off at distrokid.com backslash VIP backslash hyphenate. Again, that's distrokid.com backslash VIP backslash H-Y-P-H-E-N-A-T-E. Go get your music streaming everywhere now. If we can conceptually start the conversation with everything is made up and bullshit. What's happening? Monday, March 25th. Very exciting. Mr. Aaron Farley, how are you doing today, sir? I'm good. How are you, Randy? I'm doing great. This is a hyphenate halftime. I came up with a, with a new, um, what did I come up with? Oh, with a new tile. If you're, if you're listening to this on, uh, the Apple iTunes, I know there's a new tile in there. Have you, have you seen oh, it? Very exciting. Probably, I forget if I sent this. Um, over to you. yes, so, I believe you sent me like a preview version. Okay. These yeah, days I, uh, I say, okay. yes. <laughs> How do you oh, like this? Do? Yes. yes. I love it. This is the thing. Yep. The new tiles. Kind of figure it's a, it's a soft season two. I feel like, okay. you know, we could kind of officially say we're in spring now. It's the first oh, day yeah. of spring is happening. Has happened We've already by the time this is Officially done. Like we're going by the seasons as in like the Real four seasons. seasons. Yeah. So we'll, <laughs> we'll have four seasons a year. That's perfect. Yeah. It'll be great. Oh, it's we'll be grizzled, grizzled veterans by, uh, by summer. <laughs> so we'll it. be on season three already. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. Here, I can share I can share screens here. So people at oh, home, yeah. if you just look at your... Uh, oh, look at that. Yeah. It's a little pixelated. Yeah. I, I, need a, I need a higher res thing there. This stuff's crisp as hell, but the photo yeah, is like as best as I could do. So that's, If you can count how many fonts Randy uses, you get a prize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love we it. Definitely, we definitely need some type of graphic designer on here to, to tell me how many fonts are the correct amount of fonts to use. This one yeah. is actually fairly good. The sizing is different. But yeah, that, no, I think I'm, I'm in a millionaire demo font, and then I got nice. old Simpsons on there down there. Oh, so perfect! Shout out for our very own ruinous media. I love it. Uh, overlords. Um, but Some, what, did, what did I do? Oh yeah, sorry. Somehow I um, got on, like on Instagram. I get these. I got on some like um, font. Oh my Instagram. God. Someone's Instagram yes. that's like fontish or something. Oh, I don't know what yeah. it is. But I get those videos on like the Instagram, whatever. I, what do they call that? I know on YouTube, it's like YouTube shorts. Oh, right. Reels or something. Or, Reels, yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Like the little mini reels that pop up. Yep. And I'm like, what are these people talking about fonts? And I click on it and some guy was just like um, making, like making his point that people should be using way more fonts. Oh, in in single documents, there we go. They were they were pro multi font, pro mo- which I, which is what I would say. I'm a multi more mono fonts, multi fonter. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I guess yeah. I could add that to one another one of my hyphenates is I'm yeah. a fonto graphic design. Uh, uh, phone, that would phone be font lord. User. You would be font lord. Font lord. <laughs> Randy Randall, lord, font, font lord. lord. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Hashtag> lord la font. <laughs> yes. So but then, yeah, so the half so the halftime ones, this is what is this is if you look at your tile oh, here, yeah. it should be black with white text on it. I even did some uh, some spacing between the letters. All that, right. I just don't know if like when it looks real small, this weekly wrap up show little bubble here, I almost want like a drop shadow on it or something. I want some of the little pop on that or or like a have it lay down. I feel like that looks a little weak when it's when it's um thumbnail size when it's real small this oh, just feels yeah. a little flat there i could use some 3dness here i mean i kind of feel like you know. it doesn't matter as much it matters only that like when you do something that you stick with it for a while cuz then you start just seeing the little you just yeah. see the color you're like right. oh that's the color it's i right. mean i feel like <clears throat> honestly i feel like the blue that light blue this has become like medium blue is yeah. your is the hyphenate color. We nailed that. And that's so what as Shan- long as you have that color yeah. in there. That's what Shan said too. She because I was doing I had a funny one. What, what was my my other one? Let's see. Oh no, not that one. I had I had a fucked up one. Oh, that's what it was. Hold on. 
Sorry, this is a very visual thing. I know I, I should, yeah. uh, I can share all these. I guess if you're looking at your tile, I thought we were just talking about the tiles, like the artwork. But Well, uh, everyone, maybe, yeah, everyone can go look at their tile and they can see what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, but I did do the, um, this one. <laughs> just, so this is what I had. So the halftime, just the like halftime one dripping like over the top. <laughs> and Shannon, I, I, Shannon said, I really cheapened the whole thing. She's like, the blue thing looks professional and classy. And then when you put a big sploogy, drippy uh, the halftime death, across the front. Of the it, bleeding, yeah. the bleeding halftime across it. I love the I mean, bleeding font. I mean, this is one of my favorite I, fonts to use in the world. Yeah, I but, don't disagree yeah. with the with that choice. <laughs> Okay. Well, you can go to. Uh, I mean, you could almost. Yeah. I feel like you could even just take out my name, like take out the yellow part, <laughs> yeah, and then just have it halftime, but go from one corner to the other, just all the way across, and it, full, and like, it just canceled. it still has the it still has the guest in there, yeah, <laughs> and it just says halftime. But it's like stamped. Yeah. Like it's like she's th- she yeah, thought it made it look like it was on sale. Like I was like I was um, discounting the show. I mean, it kind of is. Yeah, but but again, <laughs> I feel like so much of my aesthetic is a discounted kind of vibe, you know. Yeah. So that we're then, sell we're trying to sell the uh, we're selling the normal show. So yeah. we're this is there the is, sales this, pitch. This is every it. yeah yeah you get this every one week free. is the sales pitch for yeah. the. Uh, Check it out. But anyway, so but she 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 kind of talked me through this. She you know I designed it, but That's she funny. she um she gave me the the inspiration of how to do it. You know, but it should be black and that's white, awesome. real, real simple. So that's <clears throat> that's the new tile. Please, uh, you know, if you want to see the the rejected halftime tile, you can follow me at uh, at Randy S Randall on Instagram. I'll post it up on uh, today, so you guys can yeah. see it. But also, you know, I'll post the other ones too. So and that, that was a that was a note from the good folks at uh, Ruinous, as they just said, yeah, the blue tile that I was using on Instagram. They're like, that should just be the show tile, and I yeah. it, bl- it literally blew my mind. It was like one of those dumb, so, so stupid, so simple things. I was like. I just needed somebody to tell me that I was spending all this time, like coming up with an Instagram thing and I didn't even think to use it for the actual show itself. They're like, no, that's great. Cause it'll populate. It it populates across all the things. It'll go up on the YouTube. I guess we're on YouTube as well, but just with the tile, the tile artwork is static. And then, but you can uh, listen to the show or watch the tile as our voices play on YouTube. So if anybody's on YouTube there, tell, give us a shout out. Tell us your, your, you know, YouTubers. You have enough money where you could like um, illustrate the whole conversation, right? <laughs> what what does that cost? Four have million, a full four million full uh, illustration an for yeah. each in like have it done in four days. So you do the interview, and then four days later, you got a full um, one hour. I think so. Illustration, right? digital illustration. You could do that for about ten thousand dollars a minute, right? Full, yeah, like, full three D. Nothing. Yeah. I feel like maybe cool. that's where you pull AI into your process. How do you it's how do like, you do AI? Um, Have you done a visual I, AI thing? I actually tried to do that today. When I was making a dumb flyer for a I've show. I've done. I mean, there's yeah. there's. Um, Is it free or do you got to pay for I've it? I've done a couple. I I've done the um, the like Chat GPT typing the, AI. There, there's an image one though. Yeah, there's an image one oh, on Chat GPT one that I've used. No, yeah. not so on there's Chat GPT. Dolly there's Canva. Something. Yeah, oh yeah, Dolly. I've used Dolly. Do you have there's to one pay on for Canva. It Do you have to no, pay for the Dolly, Dolly one is free. It's free. I okay. I feel like um the last time I used it. I mean, it's not really my I I love the I I both love and hate the idea of it. It's a very non-binary um conversation in my head i always just felt like like oh that's bullshit that's bullshit that's bullshit and then i was wanting to make something dumb today i was like oh i need the bullshit now like, i mean every, like, every story yeah. i've heard about it just always i always just felt so like why are they doing this i, would, I don't want to i don't want to even think about this so, i mean if if we can start from if we can conceptually start the conversation with everything is made up and bullshit <laughs> Okay. Yeah. We started that. That's your lower yeah. level for that, well, most that's, things. That's your starting. That's your starting place. So then, yes, yeah, yeah. it's true. Everything, it does exist in that is realm. Made up in it bullshit. also is. Can I agree with that? <laughs> Everything is made it up in bullshit. Also, like, I guess. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, money. Yeah. Let's start with money. It's made oh, well, up. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And bullshit. Based on whatever. I love. I love government this thing. rules. To, money. Oh, you know, yeah. It's like made up. But made I'm up sorry about to be on, on stuff. a tangent, but I I, no. I love this thing. But when you think about when you talk about money, it's like there's a there's a meme format where or, or the thing where it's like what's trashy if you're poor but classy if you're rich, and then someone just Ooh. wrote like Florida, 
<laughs> just all of Florida. That was yeah. like, that's that's like, actually should be the end of the conversation. <laughs> like, yeah. well, there's actually no better answer. So yeah. that's done. If, you, if you're well, rich in Florida, you're, you're, you're balling. And if you're poor yeah. in Florida, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. Life. You're everyone else. Yeah. But I just thought, but I think about that all the time. Cause even I was, I was going to pick the kids up from school today. I was like, you know, being a man in my forties with two kids and I'm picking them up at, at, you know, two o'clock in the afternoon. Like, that's pretty awesome. Like that's pretty, yeah. like, you know I mean? That's a pretty like, all right, I can afford to pick my kids up. Like I felt very privileged to be able to do that. Although the truth is I'm not making any money, you know, and I, no. I'm, not, I'm basically out of work. So they're, poor. <laughs> so I was like, is this class? It's, you know, this would be very classy if I was very rich. Like I'm so rich. I can afford to pick my kids up from school Yeah. or I'm so broke. You're also I, so poor. I, you have to pick up your kids have, at school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I love, I love to have that gratitude mindset of like, I get to do this. I don't have to do this. I get yes. to do this. So, yeah. you know, I try to. Your life has like that. put you in a yeah. position where you are rich no matter what. Yeah. That's kind of how I've started. I think as I've gotten older, I definitely, I, I, that hits me more often than not that it's just like, yes. it doesn't matter. It doesn't. Some people have money. They're not happy. Yeah. You know, people with less money, they're not more miserable. You know what I mean? Like happiness and quality of life, all these things, you know, I'm sure it's been said many times, many ways, but you know, money, yes. money doesn't buy all the happiness there is, but we work so hard. You can do so yeah. much to get it. And you think that it's gotta be worth something. And then you kind of like you coming back to what you just said, you know, it's all kind of bullshit. It's got to be meaningless yeah. and bullshit. You need it, but it doesn't really mean anything. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think that it is an interesting concept when it's like, you're trying to go towards happiness, but to think of, um, I just feel like happiness happens in little spurts mm. like even if you're say if you're playing a show like half the show is gonna go something's gonna go wrong or you're gonna <laughs> yeah. miss some notes or whatever but at the end of the day you're like yeah i had a 48 percent happiness during that show it's i remember about, those yeah. moments it's and it does about it, expectation and, like did, did i expect it to go perfect if i expected it to go perfect right. with no with no mistakes i'd be so right. bummed i'd be so let down because it, it, it didn't meet my expectations but if my expectations yeah. are probably gonna be a lot of mistakes but i expect yeah. you know there'll be there'll be a lot of energy there'll be a lot of excitement. if there's no mistakes you would get bored real quick yeah, I mean, I I feel like I I do feel like and and yes, uh, there are whole bookstores <laughs> in, in all over the world that have that like, the majority of the bookstore is is people writing about this exact yeah. thing. I think actually maybe the, everything. I'll, I'm going to go off on the limb to say every single book that's ever been written is about is something. somehow about attaining happiness and whether you should or not or how or yeah. you will never. <laughs> yeah, there are the Bible, you know, give unto yeah. Caesar what that's we'll what start, it's Caesar's. Yeah, yeah, we'll start with yeah. Bi- with sure. we'll start with the little one. Yeah, <laughs> well, when you say it, every book, you know, I just like, okay, let's. You know, no, I mean Star see. Wars. You know, I mean that's yeah. a movie. It's, I mean, you know, <laughs> no, there's books. A, Dune. I, I, we'll, we'll say Dune. I, I, I saw own Dune. several books of Star Wars. I own several Star yeah. Wars books. <laughs> yeah, these are all about happiness, well, power, well, and yeah, the, George the Lucas human had- the human condition. <laughs> So this is so late in the day. We have to like, I love it. Like Let's just keep energy. going. I'm not going to stop. Um, what is? Oh, George Lucas has this great quote where he says, "You know that um, pleasure is fleeting, but joy is lasting. Like that, that you have to go towards joy." And I think, as you know, a, a billionaire of whatever George Lucas, you know, whatever he's gotten to in his life outside of reading Joseph Campbell and you know making yeah. these these space operas but you know having some kind of introspection you know when you reach the point of just like money is so it's, it's beyond yeah. anything like he can't really even spend the money he has he, like he has to work on no. actually to give it away yeah in order to just like do by building his it. own museum right yeah but <laughs> but the, but so for him to have some response you know like at the end of all of that like okay all the money in the world definitely doesn't make you happy but he but the different the idea of ple- the different that he's like on he's been so rich for so long that he can see the definition between pleasure and joy like i really yeah. i really had to scratch my head for a while like what the fuck does that even mean like, i don't yeah. think i have I mean, I have happiness. I have, you know, I've had a lot of happy moments in my life. I'm not an unpleasant or unhappy person, but to have to, but I've had so much of it to go, well, that's just pleasure. That's not really joy. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. That's, that's some, <laughs> that's some I w- been rich for a long time kind of thought. Yeah, totally. I mean, I, I remember a couple, I'm going to pull some random non quote yeah, things that I've heard. I remember um, 
years ago listening to an interview with Tom Hanks. Oh yeah. And, and then asking him of like, what, what makes, you know, when did you figure it out? He's like, when I didn't have to worry about whether I had, whether I could afford to fix my car, if it broke down was the first time where I was like, Oh, this is what it feels like. And he's like, it just kind of feels like that. <laughs> no. Yes. Right. You like you, th- those, like- those little things, you're like taxes. Someone else is dealing with that. So day-to-day money stuff, the stuff that most people do not find joyous in any bit. When you can afford to have someone else help you with that or just do that for you and you just have to sign a couple things, <laughs> I would imagine that is what joy feels like. <laughs> <laughs> consistent joy like well, a low level of joy yeah there's feels, a relief to is, it is that yeah i remember yeah, maybe it's more relief than it is happiness oh, yeah i remember there was a moment when i um i wasn't stressed about buying groceries for myself this was before i got married and had kids but i would really like f- you know money was really tight and i'd go into the you know i'd go into the grocery store and i'd go to the cheap grocery store there was the good one across the street and i'd go to the cheap one and i remember like buying broccoli and it was like you know they have all that stem of the broccoli and it would charge yeah. by the pound i was like why am I paying for all this stem? It was like, I was looking at like cut that many corners of it. You know what I mean? If I could save 50 cents on this broccoli, I was like, I was yeah. going to do it. Cause that's why I would like break off just the, the, the bunch, you know, the bulb at the top of it all and leave <laughs> and leave the stem in the thing. Like I'm just buying this. Cause that's, I just throw that stuff away. Don't, don't charge me for that stuff. And so, but you know, I, and I may do, I, you know, got by on whatever the money there was to get by on, but I was definitely like, counting every penny and like having the thought of going to a grocery store and like stressing out, you know, if it was going to be more than $40 was really hard. And then getting to a point where I'm like, I'm not checking prices and I'm not like yeah. doing the math in my head as I put stuff in the basket. And I was like, that's pretty rich. Yeah. That, 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 I felt that. Like, I, I just felt the relief. It was that feeling of like, yeah, I'm not totally. so, I'm not so broke. I'm not so poor or I'm not so like just struggling to yeah. get by that. I could just be like, that might thing might be seven dollars. Like, yeah, there it goes. Whoop! I <laughs> have. Turns out I have seven dollars. I could spend seven dollars on yeah. well, not broccoli, but on something. I don't know what. But anyway, yeah, that was that was yeah. my turning point. And then you know, there's little little versions of that. But joy is a hard one. I think that you know, that feeling of just like really being happy. But I also feel like I'm all I'm not in a place where it's you know what's the what's the other saying I've heard where it's like if you if you don't, oh no, that's what it is. If you don't see, if you don't see the sucker in the room, it's because it's you. It's you. But, yeah. but I think it also goes the other way too. Like if you don't see the like happy person in the room, so if you don't see someone who's happier than you, then that means you might be the happiest person in the room. Yeah. In the same way, in the converse sort of way. And so I think you know it's, def- it's cliche and all those things, you know. But but having healthy kids and just getting by and all those little things, it's like I can't ask. You know, like, there's a certain level of just like baseline joy. Where I wake up and just these children make me laugh make me fr- cry make me frustrated all of those things is just a, enough to like just fills me up over over and over so i don't even think about like what is joy am i joy do i have joy and i'm like <laughs> i think that's you know that's the bowl of cereal that's the sassy look that's the yeah. you know what i mean all that little stuff you just if do i only had daily. some time to think about joy Right, yeah. So busy pulling my hair out and all the kids stuff you yeah. have to do and the running around. But Somebody yelling at those damn kids. Yeah. But definitely when I when I didn't have kids, you know, I, I think there was it was different. I didn't, you know, I mean, I can't, you know, people ask or, you know, you have those conversations with it like, what's it like to have kids? And it's like, you can't really say it. You can't I don't know. explain it. Yeah. yeah. It's, the second they're there, it. it's like, it's this is a lifelong commitment and of, of just undying, un, unending love. It just happens. Yeah. It's just, it's just, you see, it's almost like touching that little part of like whatever the higher power you have or God or that kind of thing. I'm like, Oh yeah, this just goes on for infinity. I see it now. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to die. They're going to keep living. I've passed on. There's something <laughs> I'm now become part of some cosmic stardust particles. I get it. Okay. That's it. It's fine. Yeah. Right. You know, totally. Yeah. I mean, and, and I think that, um, I think that within that, I mean, even, for me, even before kids, that the joyous moments came on those times where you, where I felt like I was trying to do something and then something happened. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. the times, the times that I didn't, that, that uh, I mostly feel frustrated. I mean, even now mostly feel frustrated is when I'm like, Oh, I should do that thing. I should, I should, I should be doing this, this, and this. And like, I have an idea or I should call that person and talk or whatever. And then I don't do it or I, it doesn't work out is the like, ugh. but the joyous times are those times where you're like, you know what? <sighs> I should do 20 sit-ups today. And then you do them and you're like, wow, I just did it. I really, I finally did it. I've been saying that for four days now. And I finally <laughs> yeah. just went like, I'm going to do a thing. And then 30 minutes later you do it and you go, Oh, Oh, that was interesting. Okay. Yeah. I did it. Or like, I'm going to like, I'm going to take the kids out here or we're going to go do this or we're going to try, like, let's go try something. Or I feel like those are the times that I mean, even just going for a hike or whatever, you get those little moments. And, and I remember having a conversation with someone about this exact thing. And, and I was like, I don't honestly think happiness exists as a thing, hmm. like as a, as a like, Static you're going state. to be happy. Like yeah. it doesn't, it's not a it's destination. Not a, it's not yeah. A it's not a, yeah. it's not even a thing. It's just like, you mean it's not Disneyland, it's like, Aaron? <laughs> well, that's a that's a whole nother. It, it, it's actually it's California Adventure. Randy. Oh, oh, I see, I see. DCA, <laughs> Disneyland is whatever. Three point is uh, the better one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, but uh, but yeah, I I th- I think it comes and goes, and it's fine to just have like little moments during a day and try to work towards those. You know, yeah. Instead well, of always trying to be like, why am I not happy now? I'm like. I don't know. Do you have to be? Maybe <laughs> right. it's your body telling you something, or maybe you just need to chill out, or maybe you're not as bummed as you think you are. You're just like, you're trying to achieve something that's unachievable and that's actually bumming you out. Like stop trying to achieve stuff. Yeah. No, I think it's <laughs> like that feeling. I remember being way. young and, and that feeling of like being sad or upset or something or nothing's going for me. I don't, you know, I can't get stuff, whatever, what, you know, just that, that feeling of being young and unhappy, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's it makes me want to laugh now because it'll sound, yeah. it sounds like an oxymoron. Like how can you be so young and so unhappy? You know, but, yeah. if, I, but if I had to be honest, I think I probably spent a lot of my, a lot of, a lot of my, you know, late teens, early twenties, pretty angry, you know, and pretty upset and in a, in an emotional heightened emotional state, it usually not in a, in a positive way. Yeah. You know, some That's kind what of your twenties are for. State. Yeah. There's a lot of feelings, a lot of things yeah. and, and the world is not coming to you. You're, you're finding out, you know, the world is not your parents and the yeah. it doesn't, they don't give you, the world does not give you everything you want. Cause when you ask, you're trying to it, find your little, you're trying to find your little place yeah. that you're going to exist. And like, you're realizing that, Oh wow! I might have to like actually push my way in. I think so, that was the toughest uh, yeah. thing for me about twenties is like you see the people that are the most like I don't want to say straightforward, but like pushy and like I'm gonna get this thing done. Da, 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 da. And then they actually are doing it, and you're going, "Wait, how are they doing that? How did they? <laughs> they just went and like talked to did. those people, and yeah. then they like said they were gonna do something, and then they figured out how to do it." And they're like 19, 22, yeah. like whatever, like they that, just know that, what you want. That's kind of that, that confidence totally. of just like, or looking like, you know what you want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not even knowing what you want, but knowing that you just want to do something or like be a part of something. And then that ends up like you end up, you end up pushing your way through the gates and then going, oh, there was actually nobody even holding them closed. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like me. they were just closed. I, I never even And all I knock. had to do is push, push on them yeah. and they were actually partially open. I still had to like squeeze through a little bit. And maybe I had to run past some dogs or, yeah. or send a like reminder. Hide like, from hey. security or something. Yeah. But like, hey, I got I, through. Can I follow up? Just following up on the last email. Like, yeah. oh yeah, totally. Sorry, I forgot to get back to you. And yeah. in your head, like, they hate me. They're never going to work with me again. Like, they're, they're, who's that fucker yeah. think he is? He's he never wrote <laughs> me back. And he's going, yeah. hey, just, you know, polite little, like, hey, just following up on that one. Oh shit, I meant to write you back. Yeah, totally. Let's do it. Let's work on that project. And you're like, yeah. That was it. It was just a polite follow up. All, well, yeah. all it took. And I built it up in my head that the world was, a, was <laughs> that everybody organizing against me. Yeah. 
Yeah, because yeah. your body loves to to <laughs> be safe, and so your your yeah. brain and your body loves to be safe. So don't, they tell you to do don't stuff, risk anything, not don't to risk do anything no. all the time, <laughs> because that because it's way more safe if you sit at home and like do nothing, yeah. or you know sit at home and go, God, I wish I would have done. You know what? I'm. You know what? Tomorrow I'm going to do that thing. I mean, like, it's like that's what. Of course, your body and your brain wants to do that because, like, yeah. it doesn't want to put you out in a situation where you could get let down or have to deal with pain and all of those kind of things. But it. So but then, it, but like anything, you can build those calluses, you know, to things. Yeah. too. You're like it doesn't hurt that bad. The guy, yeah, the, you learn that the, the pain is not yeah, that. Yeah. Someone said they didn't, they didn't like your art. Bad. They didn't like your mute. They didn't like yeah. your band. They didn't like your thing. Like, Oh, boo hoo. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's not actually why I'm doing it. You're like, and then you start to get there like, I'm not doing it for you, dumbass. I'm doing it for me. Yeah. Like, if you don't like my music, that's great. Why are you listening to it? Go yeah. go listen to something you yeah. like. <laughs> why, yeah, totally. do you, I feel bad for you. You're wasting your time. I'm over here making art that I really like. <laughs> like you're yeah. the you're Wait, the asshole. Wait, you don't like me, who, but you're here talking to me. Yeah. You're the asshole you're the your life, you know, listening to art or listening or you know, listening to music you hate, like Fuck off. Like go, go find something you like and leave me alone. But, but yeah, I think right. you're right though. That feeling of, of inaction, I think was a big thing too. When I was younger, it's like, yeah. what's this thing? I'm like, Oh, like I'm, I'm frustrating. I'm raging. But it's like, well, I need to work. I need to be working on something. Like what is yeah. the, What's the next step I can take in front of me? And it's not like I'm going to achieve the goals, go from zero to a hundred, but try to go from zero to one. You know, just try to get to yeah. one, whatever that is. And then one to two, the two to three. And if you keep doing, finding those little small steps. And I think that's the part where you're like, oh yeah, if I'm working on something, it's hard to be, it's hard to be, you know, sad when you're in, when you're in action, when you're doing something totally. about it. You're like, well, this is the best I can do. It's, and it's really hard. I'm not good at this or I'm learning how to do this. And I'm, and then you can fight, you find those little victories and there's that, that fun little dopamine rush of like accomplishing small battles every day or small little victories. Yeah. You know. And you realize that the majority of the people who you were like scared to talk to or whatever, they were either in your shoes, like not very many years ago, or oh, yeah. they're still in your shoes and they're like, dude, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just, <laughs> I'm best. good at like putting people together. I'm good at like, oh, you should work with this guy. This, you should work with this girl. You should work with her. You should work with them. And, yeah. and then you find out those people, then all of a sudden they're like, yeah, now I'm like an executive. <laughs> like, I don't know how this happened. <laughs> you know, there's like, well, I well, just well, ended up yeah. being good at a thing, you know? My favorite is, and I don't know if you ever saw this, you know, talking about the Hollywood world, but like the personal assistant, the, the, the PA to the, to the director or oh, producer yeah. or talent or something. And then the next project, they're the producer. Yeah, <laughs> and you're I like, have, wait, I have. You literally went uh, from secretary, friends. coffee gopher person to now you have a producer credit on a major motion picture. You motherfucker, how'd that happen? Yeah, I have a, I have a really good friend who was an assistant, and um, they are now like a huge producer, and they Outrageous. started as an assistant. Yeah, that's yeah. Nuts. I mean, it, but it but again, so though, stupidly it's, simple. Like that's all you had to do. Like, who it's knew? confidence, but then it's also like. But then you also have to be able to do the job. It just turns out that probably the job is more attainable than you think it is once you know the rules of the job. Right. I think most jobs are probably like that. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, that seems really difficult. And then when you learn like the 10 steps that you need to do to do that job, you're like, oh, it's mostly relationships, being <laughs> able to talk to people, not yeah. being an asshole, or... Being a huge asshole, but having to being able to back it up <laughs> with well, with results yeah. and money. <laughs> well, I see it too. Like the skill set of the job is not the hard part; it's the getting of the job is the thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I, and the, you know, most people are like qualified to do like you know ten to fifty different jobs, but but being in a place where they're hireable or they can be, you know, have enough experience is always that catch twenty two. Like I know how to do it, well, but have you ever done it? No, because. I've never done it. You know, it's like, well, you have to have experience. How am I supposed to get experience if I haven't done it? Like finding yeah. those little loopholes of like, well, I was close to somebody who did it or I assisted somebody who did it. And yeah. then you, you know, kind of get your toe in there. You're like, I don't want to well, be, I'm not here to be an assistant. It's like, yeah, but that's the way you do it. You have to, be, yeah. you have to get, as long as in. you can put that kind of stuff in, then people are like, Oh, okay. You did a, you did a job that is not fun and you didn't complain for six months. Cool. We're going to move yeah. you up to this one. Try not complaining about this one. <laughs> well, <he'll, laughs> and we'll give you a little harder. bit more money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. 
I love that quote yeah. from Matt from Mad Men with the uh, uh, Don Draper to Peggy, and she's like, "But I didn't get the I didn't get you know acknowledged for all the hard work and for all the stuff. No one said thank you. No one said anything." And Don, you know, th- th- this is in character. You know, the, the mm-hmm. character says, "You know, that's what the money's for." Like, you know, my <laughs> wife Shannon and I were constantly saying that. It's like, yeah, yeah, no one appreciates what you do. No one says thank you yeah. for doing your job. They pay you at the end of every two weeks or at the end of yeah. every month. And that's the that's thank, thank you. you enough. That's that's yeah. the that's the appreciation. That's the validation of like you belong. We we yeah. didn't fire you this month. And as a matter of fact, we're going to give you money, and you can go pay your bills and go out and t- go buy go buy dinner <laughs> tonight. Yeah. Like oh, look, okay, that's the thank you. I see. Yeah. No one has to say thank you. You shouldn't expect it. Shouldn't be expected if you ever do get thank you, thanks, or complimented on any, any anything that you're working on. That's that's icing on top. That's almost unnecessary. I feel like. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's but you know, interesting. It's, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, you know, it's a hard job is fixing um, vintage tube amps. <laughs> yes. But. I was just trying to think of a way in. Perfect. <laughs> yes. Nailed Speaking it. Speaking of difficult jobs. <laughs> Colleen Fazio. How cool is she? Had you, had oh you heard God, of her? Had amazing. you seen her YouTube channel before? She's got no, a really no, popular I haven't. YouTube no. channel where she breaks down um, the, the guts of, of great amps. Yeah. Although I did, it definitely made me want to, I mean, because you are a consummate gear guy. You have <laughs> a lot of gear, but, but you the, also in know. a very narrow world. You know what I mean? I think but, gear guys. Yeah, but you also but you know like the the intricacies of the of the stuff of like the like the enough research of mm. black flag amps and <laughs> and oh, yeah. the, the a lot of manpower the, and a lot of shitty amps. I put, yeah, put a lot of time in also, on a lot of bad amps. Yeah. But also, I was over yeah. there, and you're like, oh look, I got the. Um, the, the Steve Albini amp distortion the, uh, pedal that was used on was it Nevermind? Uh, the, well, it and was you had live. the the other it little was, amp. Yeah. It was the live one. Yeah, yeah. Well, so yeah, there was the Studio right. Pre. Yeah, the, the, right. The Kirk, and you the had put Cobain together a whole. Hole. Yeah. Yes, like and happen. so you put together the whole thing. So when I came over, you're like, "Turn that guitar on, just play a couple, play a couple of chords." And I was like, "Oh my god, it sounds like Nirvana." And you're like, "Aha, exactly." It does because it's the exact same setup. So that's what I love. I love that. I I could watch. I'm not that person at all. I would get oh. lost in step two. Oh god. But I love that the I could listen to the conversations forever or i could listen to you talk about amps and tubes and speakers and black flag and oh my god and um but it also made yeah. me think of when you were saying that i was like you really should try to interview dave rat oh i would love to i, I mean that would to. be amazing yeah. i feel like you guys could have like a 10 hour oh conversation I'd be, I'd be he's so such a nice to, yeah Rat's i mean the one time i met him Jesus. he is like such a nice guy although i was there to shoot photos for it was like for guitar center so <laughs> it's it's i mean i've heard that he's a very nice guy but he, he also seems probably, very nice i follow him on all the socials yeah. and i see his stuff he's great i'm sure i'm just gonna put it out there he's a very okay. nice guy he also gave me a free pair of sweats that i've now <laughs> so mentioned cool. twice on the <laughs> show i'm hoping for a third pair, a third of, pair of rat <laughs> sweats <laughs> do, do, are they going up in size do you need a bigger size now I probably was, I don't know. I'm, I'm in between, I'm, I'm in between pant sizes. I'm oh, like oh, a, okay. in between a medium and a large. The medium oh. fits well, except for the, the waist is a little tight. And then, I mean, by a little, I mean, like, don't blow the buttons out. I can still wear mediums. But then the larges are too baggy. Like I bought a pair of sweats the other yeah. day. Cause I'm like, I need some new sweats. I'm like, I better just buy larges. And they're massive. They're huge. And I'm like, it made me feel great. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm, just I'm not a large, things. Look at this. I'm not a large in sweats yet. Yeah. This is a good thing. I'm still yet. a medium in sweats. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm working. I told you I was doing sit-ups. I You're did doing 10. Good. You're doing good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, but I was going to say too, with the, with the amp stuff too. I mean, that, a lot of that, you know, from my experience is just trial and error. Like I've had all these cheap amps or, or stuff that was cheap and inexpensive and just like made do with like, cause I think the, the stuff with all that with gear and like the, it's, it's, it's ear training or blowing your ears out with yeah. enough things that you and, and just playing them over night after night. You, it's like, you just, you get tuned into all the little funny things that, that amps can and can't do. You know, yeah. I, I'm lucky enough to have just logged in whatever those 10,000 hours of, of playing guitar through yep. loud amps and then you just mm-hmm. kind of get to the thing of like this these ones you start to have categories like why does this one sound like this because then you're like that sounds like this other one and then you start to talk to somebody who knows better and they go well it has this tube so like oh that's the same tubes as those okay or it's these yeah. big old heavy transformers and you start to understand the characteristics and realize it's not a coincidence that the, the, yeah. the amp that you like sounds like this other amp that you like and then you look at the insides you're like oh 
okay, I see why they're doing those things. And the ones you hate are so connected to like, Oh, it sounds like shit. It sounds like that other amp. And they're like, Oh yeah, that's because it basically is that in a different box. I'm like, yeah, makes sense. Okay. Well, and, and I loved how she talked about, she just name off amps. She's like, well, we get a lot of these. We get a lot of these. Mm-hmm. But she's like, but I had the, <laughs> this, this, uh, Gibson, like 1930s Gibson, blah, blah, blah. And it was like such a treat to work on like this old set of electronics that she'd never seen before and have to like figure it out and go through. And I, I just think, I think that's so cool. I mean, I kind of think of it as cameras. Like I used to, try to kind of collect cameras, but then you, you hit a certain point where you're, you can only afford, afford the old ones that are one step above a toy, (laughs) unless you want to start shelling out thousands of thousands of dollars. And so, so I can know, I know that of like, Oh, I, I can see that. Like when you walk into somewhere and you go, Oh my God, is that a Rolleiflex? Is that like a sixties? Is that from the (laughs) sixties? Wait, what, what is that? A, is that a 135? Is that, a, you know, like you, you get into all those numbers and stuff. And so to hear her talk about amps and electronics in that way was cool. And also to hear about all the Fender, like, like, well, because we're on the West coast, like I get a bunch of Fender stuff, whereas on the East coast, they don't get as much Fender stuff. They usually get PV or they get whatever was local yeah. to the area in the, before Amazon or whatever. Isn't that crazy though? Yeah. Just yeah. still think about the locality of stuff. And like, that was always cool about getting to go on tour and just kind of seeing what, you know, what you could find out there or what was rare, what was abundant in one place would be rare somewhere else. I mean, yeah. I think the, the internet and, you know, eBay and now reverb and all these different, you know, global websites have kind of squashed that, but you definitely yeah. could find certain things in certain places or even in England, you know what I mean? Like getting a Marshall is like, Oh, okay, that's easier. We're more, you know, Marshalls and oranges and like a back line will show up and you're like, Oh, these are really great. I'm like, Oh yeah, we make them right over there. I'm like, <laughs> got it. Where that's do they cool. make Marshalls? Uh, and well, I think it was London, but now they're, I think they're up in like Milton keys or somewhere, somewhere like North of, I don't know, just outside of London. Oh, wow. I didn't it's, even it's know a British, Marshall a British was a British amp. Oh yeah. I just think of them as like being an American, that that would just be an American amp for some reason. Oh my God. No, that is the, the when, when you see, well, there's two, you know, when they say British, you know, like in the, in the, the amp simulator knobs, when you turn to British, you're yeah. either getting, it's either code for Marshall or a Vox, you know, or Vox. Vox yeah. One. Yeah. But they'll, they'll, you know, maybe there's like a, yeah, but the British tone is normally, you, you know, mean British crunch. Tone. That's that's yeah. British crunch. Is <laughs> the British the crunch. Yeah. That's, oh, that's going to be my the favorite. Vox. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the British crunch with a little, little reverb and I like British uh, put, crunch pull for the breakfast. Ba- I, I, the I base pour, up a little bit. I pour a big bowl of British crunch for breakfast, <laughs> with a little orange juice and some toast inside. It's part of a complete healthy breakfast. Oh my God. That's amazing. I was yeah. waiting though. I was, I was hoping that you were going to, um, Ask her about the uh, Sovtech MiG sixty. <laughs> that's your like, that's your on. sweet spot. Yeah, that's my sweet spot. That's <laughs> that's actually the only the only amp I, that I never actually owned. I just kind of uh, did you borrow it? What was the story? Uh, it had blown tubes. Had two mm-hmm. blown tubes, and so I had to get it fixed. And then when I got it fixed, I um, just got to use it for however long we were a band. Oh, it was somebody else band. in the band. Somebody else in the band had a yeah, it was someone amp else's. And you it was it, it was use, yeah. Chris's friend's amp. Got his it. head. He had two of them, oh. and I was playing with this horrible, like a solid state Fender. I don't. I don't even know what it was. It was yeah. like red knobs. Oh, uh, yeah. did, did it have gray uh, Tolex kind pro- of fuzzy I don't know, carpet? Probably. F- gray carpet on the outside. I had you know. I had traded that for. A, a, a skateboard i don't know i don't know what, <laughs> yeah. but i was playing with that when i started playing with chris and then um and he was like dude you gotta get this this sucks and i'm like what do you mean it's really loud and he's like no 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 it's not the you same. gotta get a better amp it's not the same as and so good. um yeah his friend jeff loaned me that but the funny thing is i never even thought of like what tubes i would put in it oh. it just knew i knew it needed two tubes or needed whatever i paid like 125 i don't know how much i paid not very much sounds right where did you and go? then by gonna... i took it to the uh music man shop that was on okay. sunset mesa so the music, music man mesa boogie sorry mesa it's not boogie music man. Great. mesa yep. boogie so i just yeah. took it there i never asked them 
what tubes they put in it or anything. Yeah. I never they, even thought that they put the correct that it would tubes. make like, di- yeah, yeah. And uh, I will never. I will be chasing the sound of that head every time I try to play anywhere. I'm like, yeah, this is okay. Yeah. It's no soft tech MIG 60 though. And remember it's- when we looked at that one and we're like. I'm like, Randy, we should go in on this one. And it was yeah. like 400 bucks. Oh, I'm like, I'll buy done. half of Why it. Why didn't we do it? I'll Why buy half of it, it and you can just have it at your house and I can come borrow it. And then we didn't. Now they're like 800 bucks minimum. Yeah. But still, again, you, you can get the MiG now. 50, but that is no MiG 60. Is the MiG 60 was the one? Yeah, Let's the MiG see. 60 was like a, um, it was, I mean, 60 watts, but it was really like 100 watt power I, there was something i don't know someone explained it to me once okay i'm yeah. like sure I'm, it's I'm loud trying to look it up i here. turn it up to three or four maybe and uh we used to blow everybody out of the oh, club they're el 34s is what's in the original soft tech mig mig 60 um uh thing for so those are those are like those are like marshalls it's got that okay. mid, mid, mid forward kind of crunch was what those have well, that's I, always, what I, I think... always thought of them being a little bit more like woofier or like having a little bit more like um, compression or sort of it, holding together in the base. Super range. heavy. Yeah. Like yeah. the mid, the mid and the base range were super mm. fat. Yeah. And even when I tried to play, like I tried to play through a couple of marshals when, and again, like you were saying in the interview, it was like, I don't even know what it was, a JCM 800 or if it, I don't know what it was, but there were a couple of times I played through marshals and I'm like, ah, it's loud. But it sounds very thin compared mm. to the Sovtech. The Sovtech just felt like it was uh, loud, but then you were also kind of listening to it through syrup. Like it was all running yeah. through. Like there was a little bolt, like a like someone had attached one of those honey bears into the <laughs> circuitry in the back, and it had to run through a bear full of honey before That's it went out liked. the speakers. Oh yeah. So, that so was, and I was playing yeah. an SG. Yeah, I mean, it yep. was just like oh, they're great. You, yeah, they it was probably, perfect. They probably put either sixty five fifties or six L sixes. Six L sixes is what I always had in all the um, Sun um, Model Ts, and it looks like it looks like you can put six L sixes as far as just a quick um, half ass internet research, you know, going okay. on here. So the, I bet the one you had probably got you probably put in six L sixes, which sounded great, or sixty five fifties, somewhere in there. I it's looking like it could be possible. And then if that's the case, then that's that, that's that good model T sort of sound. And oh, it's the kind go. of thing that's where it sounds, it, was then. It's, it sounds better the louder it gets. Right. Cause it kind of like oh, pushes it. Like that's the thing that was always so hard with the model T's is the, the power amp, the power or the, the, the pre, the preamp side for tone was okay. But the better where it really shined is then the power amp. When you really heat up and really push those power tubes. Yeah. That's where it just that gets, you know, above, above like, five on the master it's just where it's yeah. like oh all the compression yeah. and the low end and it holds together but you need to have it loud to get yeah. that tone yeah so it's not and like i was playing just, through a yeah. 410 mm. and punchy, uh yeah, yeah. but but even that was like the cabinet that i got was from um black market mm-hmm. oh, yeah. that place that was a great store was, oh my god that place is amazing la used gear shop just and, quintessential pre-internet you know, used gear shop. And it was a place where a lot of times when people were were recording records, they would come in and they would rent gear for like a month and then they'd bring it back or whatever. And I was going in there and I'm like, I need a cabinet and I have no money, but I don't want anything <laughs> horrible. Yeah. But I can't afford like a four or $500 and he's like, you know what? We actually just had this one roll in. And I'm like, okay, I'm sure he did. <laughs> and he's like, it has no, we don't know what it is. The speakers have no name on them. And they're, it's, but they're super heavy and the magnets are massive. And it's been used like two, two engineers just brought it back. Like, and they used it on their recordings. And they were like, this is the one. We don't know why. And I'll sell it to you for 150 bucks. And I was like, sold. So So then I had that forever and never knew what was in it. I never knew what the speakers were. It was so old and like beat up. And, uh, and I, there was one speaker blue and I had to get a new speaker and that was it. 
And then but so who knows? It could have also been in this. Be- no, it sounded great. It, was, sounded great. I mean, it oh. still had three other ones. What? what so um, I can what, still what, feel that thing tipping over every time I try to roll it up. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I just had this thing of like, oh, wait. Oh, oh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What what recordings did they use it on? Did he tell you? Was it no, like, I don't know. Some it, record? It's just okay. local. It's just someone that was like, we need five cabinets and bring it in. Okay. And he's like, I don't know. Some guy just brought this back. And he was like, that's, that's the one. Well, that huh. that one's. He's always also trying to just sell me. It's probably his buddies, and yeah, he got a commission. One hundred fifty bucks. Hopefully, it, it came in. Hey, it today. worked for me. Yeah, he said his girlfriend's gonna kill him if he brings it back home. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. It's it's so hard too. But the, the 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 fucked up part of all of this stuff is even whatever you think you know, at least from from my you know, the, the goofball operator error side of being a musician everything's still different. Even you could find the exact same guitar built on the exact same day from the exact same plant. And it just plays different sounds, different feels different. Now that's more than likely operator error. It's more like more than likely my hands, my brain, my ears (laughs) are the thing that's wrong, but it also could be, you know, the, especially when, when you get into older gear, you know, things, there was variations, there was different materials, there was different metals of a different day that a thing happened. And, you know, all that stuff, you know, plays into it in one form or another, but it's also, you know, it all basically works. You, you're going to find, you know, yeah. the one, the, the one, the sweet spot that's for you. If you're lucky enough to play something long enough and stick with something long enough, you're just going to know, like, I like this. I don't know why. Cause my fingers are, you know, quarter inch shorter than someone else's, you know, just yeah. your favorite guitar totally. player might be, be playing this other guitar, but you're just even trying like your hands are just shaped just slightly wrong. Your knuckles in the wrong position. Just you're born that way. So you got to find the guitar that works for you and your the yeah. grab of your hand and all that well, stuff. Well, and they're all know. made with different pieces of wood, different mm-hmm. metal, different everything. I mean, I think years ago I, I um, shot for Music Man guitars for a little mm-hmm. bit and I got to go up to the factory a couple times and shoot in the factory and see you know, everything being made and, and go from step to step to step. And it really is just like, well, there's like seven piles of wood drying over there. And those are almost dry. Those have four more months. Those have two more months that has one more month. And it's all like humidified, you know? Yeah. And so it's like, if the weather is different for like six months and it's two degrees warmer, that wood that sat there is going to be just a little bit different. And it's going to yeah. like, depending on what guitar it goes in and then they hand wine all the pickups. So you go through and there's all the people in there, like winding up the pickups and like, oh my God. and you know, they're probably 99.9% the same, but you know, we have 99% the same uh, DNA as chimps. <laughs> so, you know, 99% is not all that yep. close. Yeah. No, and I think I, I remember hearing stories too. I think I don't know if it was at the Gibson factory or at the Fender factory, but they had modified um, sewing machines to 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 wind the pickups. You know, you just press. On oh, the that's machine. amazing! And sometimes people would have a heavy foot, you know, and they would wind. Yeah. You'd get more winds in it, and those guitars that those the, those went in had a certain sound. And other people just wanted to get out of there for the day, and they'd 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 stop early, and those pickups sound like those pickups. You know, and it was you'd have no half reason. less wound. Yeah, you know, but because I think the wind on a pickup is, I you know, you're into the thousands of of wines, so yeah. you know, a few hundred here or there, you know, or it's gonna it's gonna make a nominal difference, you know. But I think it's it's also the stuff people love to say, you know, this is all yeah. shit. People like tone wood, and you know, this becomes a cork sniffer kind of thing pretty quick too. <laughs> cork sniffer, don't become a cork sniffer. Yeah. But it's you know, but it's fun though. But that's why but I really respected you know what Colleen does because I think she obviously has a huge appreciation for it, and a huge amount of knowledge for what oh, she's yeah. doing and, and and great taste and you know she knows what sounds good. And well, um, it's it's you know, it's, it's cool that it's almost like a family business too. It's yeah. like she learned everything from her uncle, or at least she started working mm-hmm. with her uncle, or and her uncle is actually the one that got her into playing guitar and and that. Like to start from there also, I think is a cool, a cool thing, especially for people now with like all of those kind of jobs are dwindling or going away. Even how she was talking about how a lot of the older, mostly men in the industry were like, oh my God, we're like, we're, we're happy that younger people are coming in because we thought that this is just going to be a dying, a dying thing that you aren't you weren't going to have these like little re- repair shops anymore. 
You're going to yeah. have to send your stuff into the factory or send it, you know, go through Guitar Center or whatever. Well, it's it, it's funny. I saw she had a great quote that I think it was like in uh, Vintage Guitar Magazine or one of the, you know, maybe one of these kind of collector guitar magazines where she was just saying that a lot of the, you know, the digital um, DSP or the, or the digital um, uh, emulator amps. You know, these, this new stuff yeah. that's coming out, you know, they're like the, the fractals and whatever the, the that they're not going to last for 20 years because when they break, yeah. no one's going to fix them. Whereas yeah. like these other amps, you know, have been going for, you know, 50, 60 years and you can keep, you can replace it, you know, almost like an old yeah. car where it's like, you wonder like where are all these, you know, the, the computerized cars, it's, there's not really an industry built up around repairing these things are like old computers you know what i mean like nobody wants a vintage 2015 mac you know what i mean you know you're just, it's not like that's the year that's the one but it's so you cool it though going. yeah yeah like fully unusable yeah. like a unusable machine i think like she was even talking about that um that a lot of those like when they break they just need like a software update mm -hmm. and like like but then eventually i mean like I feel like I have two iPads from the past that you go to update them and they're like, oh yeah, no, you can't update this one. Yeah. We've like, turned into garbage oh. now. We belong. Yeah. Like we belong what, at the what am I supposed can. to do with this? Well, no, you're not supposed to do anything with it. Yeah. We were designed you were supposed to, to buy another one a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think that it's interesting when amps and stuff, when that kind of thing happens because it's an actual usable I mean, I can understand the computer thing because the technology goes so much and you need so many hard drive spaces and that doesn't have a fast enough processor and blah, 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 blah. But like an amp is an amp. Like you're playing guitar. It's a, it's a very, it's a, it's a, a system that has been, uh, the parameters have been set. Yeah. <laughs> like you're trying to play an electronic thing very loud Yeah. or quiet or whatever. But like once you get all the computers and all that stuff in there, it really does plan it for obsolescence a bit. And instead of going like, well, <clears throat> but that already worked though, right? Like it kind of was future proof. Like an amp is, as long as you have a, a wall to plug it into and you're still using quarter inch cable, dude, like your amp's going to work. There's like, there's no more technology needed. Yeah, It's not like a television where... You need different things to come into it to show through it. It's like, no, as long as we still have uh, guitars and chords and electricity, I think we're good, right? It's, we don't need to make these yeah. things better, I don't think. It's so wild, though, when, yeah, when you think of it, right? Because there's like, you know, the Gibson, you know, Gibson is basically modern contemporary Gibson is just making, you know, 50 year old amplifiers, you know, or, you know, or 50 year old yeah. guitars, 60 year old yeah. guitars now. And they and, keep trying to, they had that guy that came in and he was like, we're going to revolutionize guitars. And he made like the, uh, the, the, the robot auto tuners, tune, tuners, yeah. like the tuners that would tune for you and all that kind of stuff. And it just like tanked. It's, it's, he just spent yeah. so much Gibson money. Yeah. Guitars are really one of those things you just think of like, it's not really a cutting edge, bleeding edge technology no. space. It's, it's There's a know, reason not that many people are playing them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> because right. it, because it's like it's like no 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 you play guitar if you want to play guitar you're not if you're like a future like you, like oh my god I need a Tesla because it's the new thing and da, 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 da. Yeah. like no you want a guitar because you play guitar and you think guitars are amazing and that's it like the technology is done we're done with the technology <laughs> it hit its peak and now we're just riding the wave of the peak. Yeah. Of like the guitars are perfect. They have the been perfected. The they were perfected do, years yeah. ago. Yeah. The best you can do is make it sound like it's at least a few decades old. You know, God, <laughs> yeah. God, God forbid you make something that sounds modern because nobody wants yeah. that or contemporary. We're really looking yeah. for that sweet spot of a tone that was has been captured on ancient technology. That's all you can hope and, for. And now we're back to the joy conversation. <laughs> yeah. It's like people Why? keep trying yeah. to create like something that they keep telling everybody is making you happy when really the joy happened years ago and you just have to find the joy and stick with it. You don't got to yeah. be happy. Oh my God. Just find the joy. Yeah. 
And right? I think that's so that's so much of it too. Like, I think you know, like the guitar you fell in love with, or the music you fell in love with from fourteen to twenty five, is just yeah. going to be what you love. There's no there's there's no accounting for taste or for it's it's timing more than anything. You know what I mean? Like whatever you're whatever you're into is just because of when you were born and where you were born. That's your it. feelings. You're, you're not yeah. better. You don't have you really don't have better taste or worse taste or anything. It's like if you were born between this time and that time, you're gonna like these bands. You're gonna like these sounds. Yeah, like this sort of stuff. It, it is true. It, Although I do think I have yeah. better taste now than I had, than I had in my late teens. Yeah. You had my, you had better taste than I had when you were in your late teens <laughs> I was, I was, and early twenties. It I took me snobby. a while to get some, it, it took me a while to get good yeah. taste. <laughs> oh, I still like tons of bad stuff. I think I, yeah, I, I've, I've embraced, I've reached the point of uh, fatherhood where I dance in the grocery aisle or you know, oh, I, I, yeah. I dance at the store. I don't care. Whatever it is. Like, that's the best thing about getting older yeah. is that people just stop watching. <laughs> they never were watching. That's the oh, that's, that's true. what you realize. Is that they you never, actually realize yeah. the veil is unfurled that nobody cares about you. <laughs> nobody gave a shit. No one was watching yeah. you anytime ever anyway. Yeah, when you're you in your twenties, you thought everyone stop. cared about you. Stop and when looking you're, at us. Like, yeah. So. When you're in your forties, you realize no one cares. Yeah. Yeah. Like, exactly. oh, you mean I can do almost anything? No one cares? Yep. No one that's cares. It. Yeah. That reminds me of that great story, like, you know, all those Bill Murray stories, you know, but like one where he goes up to somebody at a restaurant and takes a French try off their plate and eats it. And he just tells them, no one's ever going to believe you. And you're just like, <laughs> yeah, just live your life like Bill Murray. At least there's whatever degree that is, you know, just sort of like, yeah, this, just do what you want to do. It'll be fine. Yeah. It'll, someone will, it's, it's not, it's not for you to figure out. It's just for you to live. You don't have to have yeah. all the answers. You don't have to have the meaning of it all. You're just supposed to just be there and experience it all. Yeah. yeah. The joy wow. is within you. Every yeah. moment. You just have to believe it. It's like the never ending story. Yeah. Yeah. You had, oh man, you had I to... tried to watch that movie. Have you tried oh. to watch that movie with your kids? Oh yeah, no, they can't do it. It's no. so sad. Oh, yeah, so I tried to. It's horrible. And I was like, Oh my god, this is my favorite movie. movie. Yeah. This is so sad and it's so slow. And I don't I can't stick with it. Yeah, I couldn't do it. We haven't seen anyone in about <laughs> all thousand years. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Artax, I train you. No. no. Come say my name, Bastion. Say my name. <laughs> uh, my favorite part, I think they like they definitely recorded the audio all really heavily compressed. And it was like some weird ADR stuff that they did in that because I remember as a kid, just always the sound of like and, like as soon as he gets into the school, it's like math test. Oh no. And he like grabs a little like grabs the key out of that little like metal glass box and runs up the stairs and all the foley you can hear everything like clinking yeah. and then he pulls the he pulls the thing over like he tries to eat the sandwich and he saves half of it like no we still have a long way to go not now <laughs> and he saves it and he keeps keeps reading it and the wind and the things I love that movie I mean that movie's like part of my DNA I'm infused with the entire film of that whole thing but no my oh, kids my, my kids can't I mean you know. They can't watch. Yeah. They can't watch Star Wars. I'm trying to show them the original Star Wars, and, they, and it's like, yeah. okay, you're fine. It's it's okay. I understand. You don't. Lila went those. through a Star Wars phase, and she oh. is a lover of Star Wars. That's good. and Towns is like, uh, you haven't Harry Potter. Did that ever happen? My kids can't do Harry no. Potter. Yeah. Can't do Harry Potter. I we did Dune could. though. We it. saw we oh. saw the second Dune in the just theaters with with Towns too, or no? Just Lila. Yeah, with Towns. Yeah. yeah. How did he, how do you like it? Uh, hey, he liked it. He didn't really watch the first one, so. Oh, yeah. And um, I get confused during those movies, but there's like when there's too many worlds, but that that um, it, what I thought was interesting is it really made me go back and go like, okay, wait, what's the timeline? And I know as a movie person, you would know the timeline, but I didn't of like when Dune was written, then when Star Wars was oh, made. God. Yeah. And that Dune was because first. this, yeah. And the sand world was basically created by, uh, who's the author of Dune? Frank Herbert. Frank Herbert yeah. was created. And then all of these movies afterwards, like have like Mad Max and, and everybody has like yeah. sand worlds like this. Yeah. Oh no, the, Everything's going to be sand worlds. Yeah. And then I just, you know, even when we watched the first one, I was like, oh, yeah, the Star Wars, when they're in the sand world with Jabba the Hutt and they're trying not to get yes. eaten by the sandworm. Got it. This is yeah. this is his, like, either homage or, yeah, I'm going <laughs> to take some of these things from so, Dune and put lifting. them in my movie. 
yeah. a little bit of heavy lifting. Yeah. Yeah. But I didn't um, know that. I didn't know that at the time, but yeah, but it was, it was also, it's just, a, it's an allegory for the middle East and the spices oil and, can, yeah, and how, right. how warring nations will try to come in and, and, and invade the middle East for the resources or any yeah. kind of imperialistic, you know, tale, you know I mean? It's yeah. Been, it was, you know, centuries of English and, and European, you know, that was it. Expansion it was all yeah. just co- colonialization, and that's, that's of everything. Film. Yeah, it's a film about colonialization and warring, yeah. warring nations taking over a third, a third world country, and then those people having you know fight back. You could, but but that's what it, it's it's unfortunately so. Um, it was so it happened so much throughout history that you know you could kind of apply the the allegory of Dune to could, so many resources. You could very so much still apply conflicts. it to everything happening now. Lithium. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or any of those things. Yeah. So, it does, and then, you know, but then it gets in those fantasticalness and then there's time travel because just to build over space time, how to, how they get through the galaxies and how they go places and do things. But the, that's a general political, you know, cultural sort of, you know, um, in, you know, story. It's a war. It's a war, you know, book. Or, yeah, um, totally. Well, and I, I would say that it was amazing to see, in the theaters, the the cinematography and the photography and everything is unreal. So, yeah, um, it was nice not to see a Marvel movie. <laughs> <laughs> there's no sky beams. There's no. Uh, I mean, no you know, you're you're quippy. you're like on the edge of any of that stuff. But <laughs> yeah. it's nice to uh, to see something that is Some not. I mean, I don't watch any of those superhero movies anymore because unless I just want to chill out because i have no idea what's happening i don't know who's on whose team i don't know the storylines <laughs> i don't know first? why people are i don't know why people are fighting so much i feel like <laughs> can I we feel all like, just get along i yeah. feel like after after this many fights they should probably go like you know well, this is we're killing a lot of people we're destroying a lot of real estate <laughs> i'm we're getting too really, old for the shit yeah where are we getting where are we getting the taxes I, I just always think of like when they're just destroying full downtowns i'm like who is gonna pay for this yeah. Well, that no one seems one. to be yeah. mad that uh, they're destroying the whole downtown. <laughs> All those people have to go to work the next day. Well, that became a big plot point after um, after uh, the first Avengers, and then I think even DC picked that up as like the the um, post post Avengers one. They really tried to stop doing that, or they do the big obligatory like you know somebody calls up on the radio, we evacuated the city. Like okay, oh. everyone's like, oh, it's so all, no it's humans evacuated. are dying. <laughs> I, think, I didn't I think even know that there was calls of tone deafness post nine eleven. You know, seeing <laughs> oh my God. seeing buildings collapse and stuff. It was there was yeah, yeah there was some cultural outcry for some of that stuff. But yeah, you know what that are you gonna funny. what are you what are you gonna do? What you expect uh, original new ideas there? And you think I there's mean, you think there's somebody out there just writing in a notebook some thought that's never been thought before and with a vision that's gonna blow you away that's you know never been done. Obviously not, Randy, because if there were people making art, we would all see it. Right. And so if there was good, since it's yeah. not out there, yeah, if there was good art out there, we'd be seeing it. Well, and uh, so obviously nobody's look, writing anything. Look to and, the computers. Look to the AI. Yes. Look, starting back oh, to back the to AI. Tie, tie it all together. Yes. The, the computers yes. will tell us yes, how to rip computers. ourselves off. And, not, and we won't have to pay them for it either. If, if, if we value no. bad art, if we make bad art the most valuable property of our culture, then we, it's, easy, it's an easier sell to then just give it over to, to computers where you don't have to pay pay it and it, and it gets passed off as the same thing as the bad art you liked last year like well you know, that, I, that thing was so bad art, art art and culture is so bad right now that anybody could do it so like let's make it cheaper we'll just do it that way well i do think that the ai thing is interesting for the exact reason that you said if someone is good at building the prompts like telling it what to do and like being super detailed then you can actually build really cool things but all you, that's basically all you're doing is commute computer animation you're just not using the brushes, right? So if you're like, I want I want a character that looks like this, that's blue and fuzzy. He has big brown eyes. He has he plays a guitar. He rides a skateboard. He's going through da 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 da. Then the the AI program can build you a version of that, and then you go, oh, make his arm, make its arms a little bit longer. Okay. Um, do this, do this, do this. And then eventually you're building something, but that's like digital illustration. I mean, you could do that with your hands as well, right? Mm-hmm. What people get what people get weird about is when you're like, make 
a painting in the style of some like uh, some contemporary artist or a drawing and make it blah, 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 blah. And then they post that as if it's, and they don't say anything or whatever. And then the people go, then the people go, wait, where did you even get, where did the AI mine that data from? And is that even legal? (laughs) Yeah. Or is it, or is it like just the next step of, Google search because Google search, I could search for that artist and it would give me a hundred images and it would give me all these things that I could take. And as long as I don't sell those things, I now have that artist's thing. And so now is this now just a computer going, Oh, you want your face to look like that artist's drawings. Okay. Well, we have all that artist drawings from all of our Google searches and we have your picture of your face because you put it into the computer. I think we're in a weird t- time that like these rules haven't been written at all. And people are like, and the, and the problem is that the thing that we're writing the rules on is potentially going to take over. <laughs> <laughs> My, yeah. The, the couple of thoughts. So I, the first one is that, you know, they, the idea of even when you say the clear, like just make a big fuzzy character with a thing, it's, it's pulling from something that already exists. You right. know what I mean? Like right, that right, whether right. you use tell it to or not, it's going to pull, it's going to give you a Jim Henson esque thing. Like, and you go, yeah. not so much that more this, and you go, Oh, we want it's in yeah. Marty Croft. Or, oh, you want more of this? You know, that's you, yeah. the, the idea of just saying something and that comes out uh, an untouched original idea, a tabula rosa, you know, like, Oh wow, it's completely original. Like, no, they're yeah. all, but, but because of that, my feeling is also will the AI and the AI generated images and be the death of irony in that kind of way of our like collage culture that really took, came to rise in the nineties of the sort of like everything's, you know, samples and and collage based yeah, sort right. of things like if once if once anybody can do it you know kind of feeling because there was always there was always some feeling of a human being in there a, yeah. you know david hockney or there was something that was human you know you could feel yeah. the hu- humanity in the stuff the worst ones were the ones that just looked like bad photoshop yeah you know what i mean but when you see something really a really well done collage it's it's mm-hmm. it, it's it, it's just reeks of like um, fallibility and human the humanity in that you know what I mean it's not just the the straight lines of stuff it's you know the rips and the tears and the, the fingerprints and smudges and things of it all but if if all imagery is is um, accessible does it you know does that kind of flatten the curve in a way or flatten the whole sort of like theory of it all you know what I mean it's like be, post this is like beyond meta of Andy Warhol you know what I mean yeah. the idea of the image is everything it's only image it's all surface like, well, now that literally is it, you know, does anybody can say anything they want and create anything they want and you, and everyone just shrugs like, okay. I mean, it's kind next? of the, it's kind of the perfect thing to come out of meme culture mm-hmm. <laughs> that right. everything just became a meme. Like even on Instagram or anything, like honestly, the funniest things are the memes and the memes are just like someone saying a dumb thing and putting it over a photo <laughs> that everybody else uses. But they're like, who can say the funniest thing over this photo? Because the I'm like, the, no, yeah, the yeah. idea is the original thing. The photo is no longer the photo becomes the vessel. It's the like the, yeah. uh, the signifier. It's the joke. The, yeah, it's yeah. the vessel. And yeah, or it's like a container. You put it's the frame you put around. But but the frame is no longer as in, it's the photo by itself is not the interesting part. It's the human um, influence. It's the idea. The right the spark of an idea is where it goes. So that's genius. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And then and and it seems to be no big deal if uh someone making memes steals photos and uses them, but the second an AI steals photos, <laughs> it's like everybody's freaking out. Computers are stealing our photos. No. I'm like, oh my god, people have no. been stealing your art. If you're doing art, you should be lucky to have been have had it, it stolen yeah, at some it point. Means you're doing it well. If you're if you're been stolen, it's, yeah, I you're... mean, I really am of the idea that if all of these things I mean, you know, the the um what's the the thing that that every time you sign up for something, it checks if you're human. What's that called? Oh, the CAPTCHA or something. The CAPTCHA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, CAPTCHA was just built to feed photos into driverless <laughs> cars. 
<laughs> for to program the driverless cars. Which one of so, these images so, and is, it's is literally a bicycle? Ca- Which one of these images is an old lady well, crossing the street? Which one of these is That's a what they all are, right? A bridge, a road. There it's all road stuff. And so it literally is the car that has the cars that have the like the parking parking uh, video cameras Assist. Yeah. and the anything that they've always had they're putting those into a server Oh that server is putting them onto CAPTCHA. You're clicking on them. Those those literal photos goes back to that literal server in back into that literal car, and that car is able to go. Oh, I guess that was a streetlight. Noted. Da-da-da-da-da. When I'm at these things, that's a streetlight. We see right? thousands. Of We've these been doing that day. shit for free. Yeah. Right. Free. Yeah. And it's like we want to see if you're a human, and you're like, wait, but I'm. Tr- I'm programming the robots. <laughs> so you want to see if I'm a human and by seeing if I'm a human, that means that I'm programming the robots to then make sure that there's no humans on these things. So, so what I think is the biggest problem is that all of the money for jobs or whatever is getting sucked out from regular people and going to these companies. And that the, the underlying thing back to joy is that that takes just a little bit of joy out of everybody because they don't trust anything. And they go like, so wait, I'm, we're not, none of us are getting raises, are we? Like we're not, we're, we're using all this stuff and we're, we seem to be, things are supposed to be getting easier. It seems to be getting like, it just seems to be getting easier for money to leave my pocket <laughs> and not return. <laughs> and if, and if, if people really were just getting paid, excuse me, a, fine wage if artists were getting paid a fine wage musicians everybody for this all this ai stuff everyone would go like eh, that's fine i get to go on vacation a couple times a year and a job in a house mm. i'm good yeah <laughs> they wouldn't care about this ai shit <laughs> well i want to know when when it, when it switches from like what is a uh what is a, a bicycle to yeah. uh, what does it mean to feel um, joy? <laughs> I think I think maybe that's what all these podcasts are. There's there's a, there's a computer like tell me identify which which thing is which emotion is joy. Identify yeah. what it means to feel love. Yes. Like, Do you feel happy yes. yet? De- describe describe the the instances yeah. in which a sentient form of yeah. life will experience um, immense pleasure. And, and how is that different? Contrast that to to profound joy. Like, Does oh, this God. sound make you happy? Bop yeah. boop, beep bop boop. <laughs> no. no. How do you feel yet. about yes. about, about, the, about screams the numbers, of terror? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is your emotional response to two seven eight yeah. five four three two six seven eight two? Nothing. Like okay, we haven't yeah. gotten there yet. We're we're going to keep working on it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're we're almost there. All right, let's do it. We passed <laughs> we passed the hour mark. We've solved nothing. Yes, we've wasted. We solved it all. Hour. Oh, good. Okay. What we <laughs> learned is that nothing is important. Nothing really matters. Nothing matters Anyone to me. All right. Well, uh, we will be back uh, this Thursday with uh, uh, Justin Pearson of the Locust, another Ooh, great uh, social um, social um, deconstructionist. And uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's great. I, yeah, yeah. No, no spoilers, but that's coming yeah. up on uh, Thursday, and we, we'll I, see you next. Monday. I'm going to guess that he goes even a little deeper than we went on any of these uh, social social things. <laughs> Maybe I, I think we. That's my. That's my. I haven't heard it yet. I haven't heard it yet. <laughs> so we'll see. We to tune in to find out. What, yes, what, yeah. tune in to find out. <laughs> as will I. All right.